for some prime rib. This is God's Steakhouse. Yes. 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 Amen. You can't wait if you want some black angels. If you want the best, this is, the, this is God's house. Come on, talk to me somebody. So we bring to you one of the finest preachers on the planet. Yes. Be 
And all my battles I will fight be for thee. And the high places God said I'll bring down. darkness light us with benefits. Some of us get up and never go to the table. Hallelujah. But I make it a point. Give us this day our daily bread. God has so much for us. So great. So mighty. Father, we thank you tonight. We praise you. We glorify you. We magnify you. God, we just wanted to sing before you. For you said, come before your presence with singing. God, we thank you, O oh God, for we have offered up the sacrifice of praise, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks unto you, God. And we thank you for your word tonight. God, we, we speak a word in faith. God, knowing that you have a word for us tonight. Oh, God, a word that will heal the sick. Cleanse the leper, raise the dead, lift up the hung down head, encourage, strengthen, revive, restore, instruct, discipline. God, we thank you for your word tonight. And we ask, oh God, even as your servant said, who can know his errors? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. 
Don't let them have dominion over me. In the name of Jesus, we pray, God. We thank you for your word falling on good ground. Life-changing word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you for just another opportunity to stand before God's people. We don't take it for granted. Amen. And we thank God for our pastor, Elder Michael Tanner Smith, Sr. Amen. wonderful occasion and for me and I'm sure for you as well each year I look for meaning I look for purpose uh, in the feast because you come across scriptures that uh, some might argue support not keeping the feast so we say what do we say to those and, and if, in regard to those scriptures? Yeah. Uh, and I'm not here to argue. Amen. 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 I'm looking for meaning. Amen. Yes. I'm looking for meaning. And um, let's, let's turn to Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. You know, you understand what I'm saying. We know that it's wrong to kill. Sometimes you might want to. But you know it's wrong. Sometimes you don't understand why. You don't do it because you know you're not supposed to do it. And there are some things you do because you are supposed to do and don't know why. Amen. Amen. My niece was just asking me, you know, sometimes it, you understand, we'll get into this scripture about walking worthy of the vocation wherewith we've been called. Uh, when someone says to you, uh, almost with, an, with a slight hint of an attitude, uh, well, why don't we eat pork? Or why don't you eat pork, rather? It's not to get upset. But there is a problem when you can't explain. Talk about it. Talk about it. Why you That's don't right. do what you don't do. Right. So many times we do things because that's what we've been taught. Yes. And I heard the preacher say yesterday, and then we leave home base and then others start questioning and we start seeing other things and and we really have to go back and say why do we do right. what we do yes. Yes. Amen. Leviticus 23 verse 39 also in the 15th day of the seventh month Leviticus 23 and 39. And I have so many alarms on my phone. Yes, yes, bless the Lord. That's called maximizing every moment of the day. <laughs> Right. 
Leviticus 23, verse 39. Also in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. Right there, this is, this is not a feast for us, per se, but it is, a, it is a feast unto the Lord. Seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath of rest. And on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath of rest. And ye shall take you on the first day day the boughs of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook, and ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. And you know, it's something about when God tells you to rejoice. He doesn't say just to rejoice, but he gives you something to rejoice about. And God has given us plenty to rejoice about. And ye shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. That when you think of statute, let's we got a lot of young people here. Let's play with that word. Statute. What do you think of? A statue. Something that does not move. Something that is that is there. It's been built to last. It shall be a statue forever in your generations. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. You shall dwell in booths seven days. All that an Israelite born shall dwell in booths. That your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. And I take note of that, that God said, I made them dwell in booths. He didn't have them to make uh, uh, lasting dwelling places in the wilderness because there was no intention for them to stay in the wilderness. I am the Lord your God. And Moses declared unto the children of Israel the feast of the Lord. That's just one that we read about tonight. The Feast of Tabernacles, which focuses on a temporary dwelling place. And when we look at what God did for the children of Israel when he brought them out of the land of Egypt and the blood that was put on the doorpost and, and, and how they took the reed and they smoked the door and they dipped it in hyssop and, and, and how when they marked the doorpost it was symbolic of the marking of the cross and the redeeming blood of Jesus Christ and how he would be whipped with many stripes. So as Elder was talking about how we see Christ in all the feasts, he is the Lamb of God. John said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Even before uh, he came in his uh, adult life, even when he was born, the heavens opened and the trumpet sounded. Amen. Uh, rejoice again for the, the, the shepherds that were in the field watching their flocks. God said, Great joy, great peace has come. There was a, that was the trumpet. And I heard elders say that, that he was born during one of the feasts. And I would presume that he was born during the Feast of Trumpets. But God is in the feast. And at no time did he say that we are to stop keeping the feast. And just because you don't understand something does not mean that it is irrelevant. Right. Sometimes we dismiss things because of ignorance. That's right. All right. That is, that is. We dismiss it because we feel like it's too hard to explain. You, ever, you know, we do that with our children. When we, we can't understand how to explain something, what do we say? Because I said so. <laughs> we really don't want to tell them I don't know quite how to break that down to you. So just do it because I said so. Right? Well, we want meaning. We want to understand. Because for me, the more I understand, the more I can rejoice. Amen. He had no intention for them to stay in the wilderness. They were passing through. But as I heard Elder Smith talk about tonight, unbelief. Yes. Caused their journey to take a little bit longer. 
But the word of God says, I, I led you through the wilderness that I might humble you, that I might prove you. Amen. It was a testing time so that you could see what was in your heart. Amen. God already knows what's in our hearts. Amen. But, but he allows us to go through things so that we can see what's in our hearts. Amen. Turn to Mark, the ninth chapter. It's a holy convocation. It's a gathering. I want to talk about that too in this period of time. A holy convocation. You don't keep the feast by yourself. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. Come on. Uh, Amen. This is not, as my sister would say, bedside Baptist. Right. Right. Mm. Well. Mm. Amen. 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 This is a holy gathering. Isn't this beautiful? I can think about times, too, where it was just seven or eight. But to look out and see the table overflowing with fruit and to see the pews filled, it is a holy convocation. It is a holy gathering because God has blown the trumpet. Amen. He sounded the alarm. He gave us 10 days to get things right, if you allow me to say that. Because the day of atonement was coming. Amen. He gave us the chance to, to humble ourselves, to go to our brother, go to our sister. And then he went in. Oh, my God. He went in on our behalf. Amen. And it's, it, it, I was studying this like It's symbolic of him going in into the heavens. And he did that to purify the heavens. He ascended and he descended. And, oh, he led captivity captive. And he gave gifts to us. He, he took away all the things that were holding us captive. He bound that up. Hallelujah. Amen. And it signifies on that day of atonement that he, he's gone in, but he's coming back. Yes. Thank yes. you, Jesus. He's coming back. Yes. Yes. Mark the ninth chapter. Let's start with the first verse. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that there be some of them that stand here which shall not taste of death till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. And after six days, Jesus taketh with him Peter and James and John and leadeth them up into a high mountain apart by themselves and he was transfigured before them. He was changed right before them and his raiment became shining exceeding white as snow so as no fuller on earth can wipe them so right there he pulled back the veil so that they could see him in his full glory hallelujah glory that was so bright even almost like the the glory that ezekiel described and they appeared unto them elias or elijah with moses and they were talking with Jesus. Oh, this is so wonderful. They were talking with Jesus, Elder Harris. The law and the prophets. Elias, Elijah representing the prophets. And Moses representing the law. They were there looking face to face with the one that they prophesied about. Face to face with the one that the law was written about. And there he was himself encompassing the law and the prophets. Hallelujah. And this is what flesh will do. And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. And let us make three tabernacles. One for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. For he wist not what to say. Don't you love King James English? He wist not what to say. They could have said because he didn't 
know what he was talking about. For they were so afraid. Let me give you a little hint. When you're afraid, shut up. When you are afraid, don't open your mouth until faith comes. And there was a cloud that overshadowed them. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son. Hear him. And suddenly when they had looked round about, they saw no man anymore say what? Jesus only. With themselves. And as they came down from the mountain, he charged them that they should tell no man what things they had seen till the Son of Man were risen from the dead. And they kept that saying with themselves, questioning one with another what the rising from the dead should mean. So when we talk about tabernacles, we got to talk about the rising from the dead. We got to talk about what Paul talked about in Corinthians. So I said that Elias, Elijah represents the prophets. Moses represents the law, but they also represent something else that has to do with the rising from the dead. Elijah did not see death. That's right. That's right. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Elijah didn't see death. He was translated. That's right. God took him. So there he was in his glorified translated body. Moses died. But he was resurrected. So this is where Paul said, we shall not all sleep. But one thing that is certain is that we shall all be changed. All of us are going to change. Because this body is a temporary dwelling place. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We shall all be changed. changed. Yes. Yes. What about this three tabernacles? No need for three tabernacles. The word of God says that Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. The law was a schoolmaster to preserve us until Christ. The prophets prophesied of his coming. But now that he has come, God spoke very clearly, this is my beloved son, hear ye him. Jesus only. Unity. Yes. Jesus only. Unity. We can't have a tabernacle over here doing one thing. A tabernacle over here doing something else. A tabernacle over there doing something else. Jesus only. There will not be separate churches in heaven. So before you speak out, what did Jesus say? What is God saying? What is God saying during the feast? Why is it that we keep the feast and then others do not? Come on, turn to Ephesians, the fourth chapter. A holy gathering. A holy gathering. Thank you, God. A holy, holy gathering. Jesus only. No division. No confusion. Jesus only. 
I, when I looked at this and Acts the second chapter said that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, another feast, they were in one place with one accord. The Holy Spirit could come because they were one. Jesus is not coming back until we are one. Don't worry about it. We're going to be one. Because this is his body. We will be one. So Paul says, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you, I plead with you, I plead with you, that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. This is for us. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. The feasts make you look to the future. Amen. But while we're here, we're walking, and we got to walk worthy, yes. not arrogant, yes. but with lowliness yes. and meekness, yes. with long suffering, yes. forbearing one another in what? Love. 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 What you mean, y'all keep the feast? <laughs> <laughs> Endeavoring to keep the unity, you see that? Yeah. Of the spirit in the bond of peace. Why? There's only one body and one spirit. Even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord. Look at that. One faith. One baptism. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all. And wait a minute, in you all. Wait a minute, God is even in those that believe that he is the Christ. The son of the true and living God. Yes. He's in them too. And in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? And we know that, that he went down and took the keys from death, hell, and the grave. That's how he could ascend and lead captivity captive. That's why he could take paradise from down low and bring it up where Paul was said I was caught up he did all of that so he was working those three days and three nights he was working he was setting things right he was he was showing to all principalities, uh -huh. all powers, uh -huh. all rulers of the darkness of the world. Yes. He was showing to them, I'm Lord of heaven, yes. right. I'm Lord on the earth, that's I'm right. Lord under the earth. That's right, that's right. That's right. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I'm in all. Yes. 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 All things consist yes. of me. I'm Lord. Yes. You know, God, He 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 has a day where He's coming. To make everything right. Yes. Amen. Amen. So don't be deceived. 
God is for you. Amen. And if God be for you, Hallelujah. he's more than the whole world against you. Hallelujah. That's why we've been given a vocation to proclaim to the principalities the lordship of Jesus Christ. Amen. We've been given a charge to open up our mouths and declare his lordship. Yes, sir. Did you know that? Amen. Did you know that we ought to pray that the glory of God would manifest in the earth? Yes. yes. Did you know that? Yes. Did you know that we are supposed to declare his glory and his goodness yes. and his magnificence? Yes. That every time the enemy comes and put temptation before you and you walk the other way, that's the testament of the power and glory of God. Yes. Oh, that's great. Yes. That's great. Yes. That means that you have died to sin. Yes. The sin no longer has dominion over you. Did you know that? That's great. That's great. The old man. Oh, that's a tabernacle right there. That old man is buried. And there's a change that has taken place. There's a thing. Something on the inside. Working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. He beautifies the meat with salvation. I was just looking at the devastation of drugs and just pointing it out to my son. And I said, see, see what drugs will do to you? Yes. I said, see, see the woman. I said, I'm not criticizing her, but I want to show you what the devil does not show you. That's right. Do you see how, how sunken in her face is? Yes. Do you see that even with no teeth in her mouth, she's still drawing on that cigarette? Mm. Do you see that woman that is bent over? Jesus talked about the woman that was bound by Satan and how he loosed her so that she could stand up. I said, do you see what sin will do to you? Yes, yeah. Jesus, Jesus. But many of us, if we were to pull out some pictures of when we were out there in the world and how sin had messed us up and now look at us and you can't even tell that some of us were alcoholics. You grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. But unto every one of us is given what? Grace. According to the measure of the gift of Christ. I used to hear Bishop Daly say sometimes and I'm like, well, why am I here? This ain't for everybody. And I would say, what does he mean? by that. And what I really believe he meant was that everybody don't come at the first call. That's right. All right. That's right. Did you know that? Yeah. Everybody don't come at the first call. They're too steeped in tradition yeah. to come at the first call. So we got to walk worthy right. of the vocation where we've been called. That's right. So that they can see you can do this. Yeah. Oh, y'all can listen. Yeah. We got to walk worthy of the vocation. Yeah. Mm, my God. The Jesus. devil's on notice. Jesus. Thank, you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
That's why we got to walk worthy yes. of the vocation yes. wherewith we've been called yes. in that loneliness, yes. in that long suffering. Yes. Because if we answered the call first, it doesn't mean that we're better. That's Amen. right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Oh, come on, Zion. Amen. It doesn't mean that we're better. That's right. Because we all gonna get the same pay. Amen. Amen. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. He fulfilled all things. He said, I didn't come to destroy the law. I came to fulfill it. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. For what? For the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. And you just highlight this, underline this. Till we all come in. Till we all come in. The unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That's a picture there to show you that we still growing up. That's right. That's a beautiful picture right there to show you that we are still growing up. We got to walk worthy. And remember, we're sojourners. We're pilgrims. I'm a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to be changed. This, this, this um, mortality is going to put on immortality. Let me read that. I got to read that. Amen. My God. And I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm excited that we all coming in. It has to be true. Because Zechariah said we all going to keep the feast of tabernacles. We all coming in. And if you don't come in, you're not going to get no rain. See, see, when the word says, I will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you're not going to have room enough to receive. He was talking about rain. That's favor. That's divine favor. That means you can plant your seed, but it won't grow. God have mercy. The first man, verse 47, is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. I showed you that in Mark the ninth chapter. But we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. At the last trump, for the, trump, the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, 
death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through who? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. Don't move off of the foundation. Unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And I'll say this and I'll give it back to Elder Smith. This, this struck me. I was reading Jeremiah 35. And the Rechabites, if I'm saying that the right way. The Lord told Jeremiah, come, go call them. And put bowls of wine in front of them and give them some cups and tell them to drink the wine. Now, God knew before what the response was going to be. But they said, we can't drink this wine because our fathers commanded us not to drink wine. He also commanded us not to build houses and told us to live in tents. God have mercy. So I don't care if you or another prophet come and tell me to do something that my fathers commanded me not to do. I will stand boldly and declare I cannot do that. Oh, this is good. And they said, from the day that he commanded us, we have not done it, nor will we begin to do it. And after God used that example to rebuke Israel and say, if these natural men can keep the commandments of a natural man, how come you, with me being your father, not keep my commandments? you to go back to the Rechabites and tell them because of their loyalty because of their steadfastness, because of their obedience, they will not fail to stand before me one from their tribe or their family because they are loyal to the commandments of their father that's powerful We're standing on that sure foundation, which is Christ Jesus. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Hold on to the word of God. Look for him because he is coming back. But let us walk worthy of the vocation wherewith God has called us in meekness and lowliness. Be ready to give an answer. When someone says, why do you keep the feast? Be ready to give an answer. Don't be ready to argue. Be ready to give an answer. Because guess what? God is working on the hearts of people. And if they come to you, it's because they are ripe for harvest. Hallelujah. Oh, hear that. Hallelujah. If they come to you and ask you, it's because God has already plowed the field. Didn't he tell Jesus, you're going to reap where you didn't plow? Jesus told his disciples that. He said, look, the field is white unto harvest. Pray for the laborers. Oh, my God. For the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. You're going to reap where you didn't sow. 
Oh, hallelujah. Let me just testify. And I'm... God was plowing on me before I met Elder Smith. God was working in my heart before I met him and Minister Smith. Hallelujah. Somebody that didn't know what the Sabbath was. Somebody that didn't know what a feast day was. Somebody that was keeping Easter, Christmas, Halloween, and everything else. Till we all come in the unity of the faith. One Lord, one faith, and one baptism. In my room, God was speaking to me through the scriptures. Never even heard that there be such a house of God. Isaiah 58. Every morning. Get up. Bible fall right to the same page. And I said, I felt the conviction. Because see, God is in us all. I was already saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues as the Holy Ghost gives utterance. And guess what? Baptized in Jesus' name. Until one day, see, you got to be ready to give an answer. Oh, this is good. Till one day, Sister Geneva said, Lord, I know you're talking to me, but I don't know what the Sabbath is. If this is something you want me to do, you're going to have to explain it to me. Oh, and then God set time in motion and wheels in motion and a law allowed two paths that had never met to cross. Oh, I'm telling you, God is awesome. God is awesome. God is awesome. In the fullness of time. Yes. Go ahead and break it down. Oh, yes. Break it down. Ooh, glory. Ah, thank you, God. God had already prepared a vessel that was coming in meekness. That was coming in lowliness. To explain to me what the Sabbath was. But he had already plowed. But God allowed him to reap. But by that time, I had already, God had worked on me so that before I knew everything about the feast, I had already made up my mind that whatever God said, I was going to do it. Because I said in my heart, I don't want to get to the end of my life, Sister Sharon, and realize that I offered up to God what I wanted to give him and not what he wanted. Wow. That's called relationship. That's called relationship. Because it mattered to me what I was giving my God. It mattered to me what I was offering up to him. Oh, that's good. That's worship. That's worship. Hallelujah. And then the Lord allowed me to meet Elder Smith and Minister Smith, and there was an exchange. They ministered to me the Sabbath and the feast days. And the Lord said, teach them about relationship. All right, all right. Yes. Do you see? Yes. He gave some to be prophets. That's right. yes. Some pastors, some yes. evangelists, yes. Yes. some teachers for the perfecting of the saints, yes. Yes. for the work of the ministry. Yes. Yes. 
for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all You walk worthy. Yes. I can hear. That's right. That's right. You walk worthy. Come on. I can hear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 What's your name, God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What's your name, God? Hallelujah. Don't you feel his presence? Yes. That's when he's coming. He's coming when we're one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's when he's coming. But in the meantime, what worthy for the vocation wherewith you've been called with meekness Holiness, long suffering, and love. Till we all come in. God bless you. Hallelujah. from all of our traditions aside from all of our religious practices you are coming back for souls Hallelujah. you want us Father filled with compassion filled with love for our fellow man and as you've declared in your word the harvest is plenteous but the laborers are few now, God, we pray to you that you would send workers. Because if we send them, something's going to be done wrong. But we pray that you would send workers who will be filled with that love, filled with that compassion, filled with lowliness, filled with meekness. Those that are willing to seek. those that are willing to fish for those souls that you want added to your kingdom. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for those that are saying yes tonight. Thank you for removing us all from religion to relationship. Thank you for removing us from being dogmatic to full of compassion. Give unto us, Father, to be ready to share why we're doing what we're doing. We love you. We appreciate you. We bless your name, God. We hear you loud and clear. We submit to your will and to your way. In the name of Jesus, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Amen. Amen. Somebody give God praise for the Lord. Come on, if you know the Lord was talking to you tonight, just slide your hands up. Come on, if you know that God has saved you to make a difference, come on, slide your hand up. Because it's just not about having church, it's about us going to do the work of the Lord. Amen. Amen. If you know your life truly has been changed by hearing that word, come on. Come on, lift both hands and come on, let's worship God just for a few more moments.